things are cleaned up a little bit better. Um, and why was that? Why? Why? Why did I even hit record? Like, was just to show you that I vacuumed my cabinet? Is that it? I'm Mike Dimas, and this is Pinball Shenanigans. Okay, so because I've had COVID for the last couple weeks, almost, I tested today and like the line is so very faint. So I think by tomorrow I should be 100% COVID free, finally. But for that reason, Jamie's been staying far away from me, as well as Jay the neighbor, as they should. Jamie actually managed to not get it somehow from me. But once I wrapped up, um, my Terminator 3 and my Nugent projects, I was kind of stuck in limbo. I had nothing really to work on. But finally, today, I was able to get Jamie to help me bring down Space Invaders. Um, so I have a new toy to work on. So here we are with the new toy, Bally Space Invaders Wide Body, Super Wide Body. Gonna, I did a video of me picking this machine up, and it was a little while back, so I kind of, I forget the details of the condition and everything, I just remember it was pretty good overall. And it was playing, so that's cool. Uh, we'll take a closer look today. But uh, yeah, Bally made five of these Super Wadi, Super Wadi? super wide body machines this side is actually in really nice shape upon initial inspection um they were let's see if i can remember space invaders hot dog and future spa embryon and of course the last oh paragon so those were the five super wide body machines and i've had all but embryon it would be nice to have them all five set up side by side. I bet you somewhere exists a place that has that. Maybe the Banning California Museum before it shut down. I wonder if they had all five side by side. But if we take a close look here. Again, I probably noted this in the first video where I picked this up. So that's going to technically be, I guess, the first video in the series. This is sort of technically number two. First video is pickup, second video is setup. That's how this is gonna shake down, basically. Uh, so, very briefly, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Um, you know, I could go to measures to touch up those small little areas if I choose to, which I may, because they're just such small little areas. If it was uh, a little more bigger of an area, it would be a a lot more tricky but it does look like you know it's gonna need a little love the rubbers they've been on there for a while and I noticed on these passive pop bumpers if you look closely those rubbers are even older those are the original rubbers it's because uh, I think if I recall correctly I've done a couple of them they're a little bit of a pain to take off and put on um, or am I thinking, uh, I think I'm thinking of the mushroom targets. Those are a pain. Anyway, that shouldn't be that much of a problem. Unless the skirts are like really old and brittle and try and snap on me. But those are the original rubbers. These have been replaced at some point but are pretty crusty. Even these post cap rubbers, those are new. Um... So maybe if I can clean them up, I could reuse those if they're not brittle. But the rest of the rubbers, they got to go. Um, but that's just minor. I'm going to be going through the mechanics and electronics, of course. Even though the machine's working, I want to make sure it's, uh, you know, shenanigandified. Is that a new word? I might uh, potentially LED this bad boy as well. I do have a set of Siegecraft adapters. So maybe Space Invaders with the infinity lights would be a good candidate for that. I think what I'm going to do is take the head and put it on the bench. 
just in case there's any repinning necessary, then I can do it comfortably here. Um, oh, there's Jamie in the window. Her and her mother are outside doing some gardening. Uh, okay, so this these are the legs. They're actually in pretty decent looking shape. The leg levelers are a little bit crusty. Not that bad though. I'll get rid of these. I could probably clean these up. Maybe I'll just splurge on new ones. A couple are worse than the others. Uh, and then probably nothing in here. Oh, we got the keys. We got some set Allen set screws. Those look like they uh, are for flipper rebuilds. Okay, those are good to have. Um, I don't recall when I was loading this up into my vehicle. I was looking at these, thinking, "Sweet, no, oh, not this. What is this?" Materials needed, razor blade, exacto knife, lint-free towel, sandpaper, adhesive remover, Novus 1, playfield preparation, insert decal application. Wow. Um, I was just thinking I, if I need to, I was just going to lick and stick, you know. But I don't remember seeing these. This is a complete insert decal kit. So it looks like... They're com none of them have been used at all. There's none missing that I can see. So looks like, um, was it Keith? I think his name is Keith, who I got the machine from. Looks like he bought these, never installed them. But there's the installation instructions, so that's pretty cool. So I will probably use these guys um, wherever needed. Spruce this guy up a little cosmetically, rebuild some some old mechanics and uh, check out these electronics. So I think uh, next we'll stick the head on the table there and have a closer look. Okay, before I lift this guy up on the table unnecessarily, let's have a closer look. See if I even need to do that. Whoa, look how white this backboard is. There's usually a little burn marks or smoke marks or carbon marks from all the incandescent bulbs. Either someone cleaned those up or that is just original niceness. Wow. How about the displays? They look good. I don't see any measles yet. <clears throat> wow. Do not see any measles at all. Okay, let's take a look at the back glass. Holy poop. Wow. Um, do you see the wear spot? I do not see the wear spot because I do not think one exists. Okay, so I'm going to call that a friggin' 9.8 out of 10. I did see some something somewhere. Did I? No? All right, well, nothing's ever perfect, so I'll call that a friggin' 9.8 out of 10. Wow, this is turning out real nice. So, was this priced for $795 one day in an auction, lot number G21-82? Or is that, oh, that's 6, June 21st, 1982? Oh, I bet ya. This was listed for $7.95 in 1982. Because this came out in 1980, right? So, interesting. Very interesting. Okay, this is an interesting sign, too. All these paper covers are still intact. That's a really good indication. It means that the machine hasn't been messed with quite as much. The display is getting replaced and burnt out and... And this is another good sign. Look at this. See this black post cap rubber here? Those are always missing too. Holy crap. All five of them are still there. Okay. That just means this has not been... Holy shit. Do you see what I see? I probably saw that in the pickup, but I'm seeing it again. But this has not been abused over the years. It's very much amazing condition okay let's take a look at the cpu 
That is clean. That is really clean. But you know what is not clean? That. Wow. Duracell. The Energizers held up okay. The Duracell took a big acid poop. I guess it would be alkaline poop, really. Okay, wow. So, there's the auxiliary uh, lamp board. They use that in several Bally games. Like, I think, um, Flash Gordon and Electra, and there's a few. There's several. Um... I've got to spare one of these in case I ever need it too. With soundboard here, the original caps it looks like. Uh oh. Interesting. Someone replaced this capacitor here, but they took two to make one. Which I guess is fine. To get the correct uh, valuation there. So forty seven hundred. You know, so it turns out into like about 10,000, not quite, which is about what it's supposed to be. Uh, okay. So that's someone's attempt at upgrading. For whatever reason, the high voltage shield is missing, and so is one of these standoffs. So somebody was in here for some reason. Question is why. I don't notice any burn marks or obvious replaced components ah here we go this transistor has been replaced it looks like but that looks to be about it oh what do we got going on here what why is this can someone explain to me what the heck is going on here i've never seen that before is that yeah that, I do not know what that is. I've never seen that before. Uh, it looks like it potentially could be factory, though. Interesting. Okay. This um, hooks here, this hook. I remember I was missing one of these on an Evil Knievel, and it, it was oh, darn near impossible to find one. So I wonder if these are available again. Okay. I'm happy with what I'm seeing here. Uh, I don't think I'm going to bother doing any repinning yet. If I need to, then I will just do it. Like, if anything, these two connectors could probably use repinning just for bulletproof sake, but not really necessary. But, uh, all right, well, I am liking what I'm seeing here. So I guess uh, next thing I'll do is probably put the body on some legs. Okay, I swear probably two hours has passed since I hit the record button. I was on the phone wheeling and dealing trying to purchase a couple new pinball machines. So that took a little bit of time. And then uh, Kevin popped by to grab, um, we did an order for four color DMDs. And two belong to Kevin, one belongs to Steve. And Kevin wanted to stick in a color DMD in his Popeye, which is basically done. But last two weeks, I haven't been able to check out the action. So maybe tomorrow I might go check out his uh, Popeye restoration. Uh, you guys got to see it. it. He sent me photos. It looks amazing. Uh, these legs, I think, are actually painted black. Because uh, Bally would have been originally gray, right? But I cleaned up the leg levelers and um, replaced these two, the crusty ones. I didn't replace them all, but uh, so they are uh, looking a little better. Got rid of these uh, these things. We don't need them anymore. So I should have this guy set up right about now. And there we go. We are on legs. Okay, so what I'm doing is... I installed new leg bolts, but they are a little longer, which is often the case. And uh, these plates are uh, actually anti-cheating devices. I've explained that in previous videos. They go there. The reason they're on there is so that the kids at the arcade can't remove the leg bolt, stick their wire in through the hole, and figure out a way to trip the 
coin switches to get free games. They are anti-cheat devices, but they're also um, designed for shorter bolts. So you can see that uh, these are pressing into them. So I remove these because they aren't needed anymore. I'll keep the key hook. I'll put it right back there. Um, so I'm going to get rid of those and then make it so that my leg bolts are nice and comfortable. And then uh, we'll clean out the cabinet. We've got a couple miscellaneous bits of hardware there. Hey, look at this. The same kind of twisties on the power supply here. Okay, I didn't realize that this was this style power supply. Um, I guess this is 1980, so that would make sense. Oh, here is the cover for it. Um, clips on like like that or something so you don't electrocute yourself. And what else do we got back there? Uh, I can't really reach. There is some sliding latch there. What is that for? Is that for the back box? And uh, really nothing else. <clears throat> Just pretty clean in here. Like, take a look, all in all. This is a this is a pretty clean valley. I mean, this is uh, overall one of the cleaner ones I've had. So I'm pretty happy with that. I don't see a lot of hacks or anything. Look at the flipper mix mechs. They are all original coils. I don't see anything uh, that looks out of place. Every coil is original. Hmm. Very nice. Okay. Well. I am liking what I'm seeing here. Wait a minute. No, I am not. Do you see what I see? Look at this. We have an exploded varistor. Which means the machine will run perfectly fine. That's just to prevent uh, power surges like lightning strikes. The uh, varistor will blow before your machine electronics will. I know somewhere I bought a couple of varistors just in case. I don't think they're in here. No, I think I know where they might be, but I am going to replace that. I've never replaced one. I wonder if uh, they have polarity, if they have to go positive on one side, negative on another. I'll have a closer look at that, but good spot there. That is uh, yeah, an indication of probably lightning at once upon a time. Uh, what is this? Patent pending? That's interesting. Why is that there? It seems like a very odd thing. Never seen that sticker before on a Bally machine. Here's our original knocker. Okay, everything is looking like... These ground wires, these yellow ground wires... They're usually black, just from all the gunk that falls and spills down in the glass onto the receiver bar, which is also very clean. And then it all drips down the sides here, the front, and then just covers everything in black. This is actually amazing how yellow these ground sleeves still are. Original tilt bob, we're not missing that. There's the ball roll. So, yeah, I'm uh, pretty happy with what I'm seeing. So, I'm going to vacuum the cabinet, pull out the wires, and uh, get this uh, all set up. I'll be back. Okay, while I'm working away, I'm listening to the super awesome pinball show, which is back, which is pretty sweet. That's uh, Christopher Franchi, Christian Line, and Jeff Patterson. Uh, good to hear these boys back on the air. And uh, that's what I've been listening to. And it's uh, George Gomez interview, which I haven't got to just yet, but uh, looking forward to it. Uh, check this out. Things are cleaned up a little bit better. Um, and why was that? Why? Why? Why did I even hit record? Like, was just to show you that I vacuumed my cabinet? Is that it? I feel like there was more. Oh, I remember now. Okay. I found another whammy. That's what it was. I wanted to show you my whammy. Hey, we're missing a light bulb here. I'm just kind of perusing around. But, uh, yeah, as I was cleaning up the cabinet, dun dun dun, somebody uh, did a variation of a 
couple uh, star post repairs, I am guessing. I'm not, uh, and it looks like there's some wood filler there too. I'm not um, too concerned about it just yet. We'll have a look from the top side. I haven't looked yet. Oh, it's much easier when you don't have the uh, head on either. Okay, so it's these two posts here. Well, they are the closest thing to the flippers. They get beat on for the last 40 years. So I can see why they would need to be repaired. But right now, these are in there firm, solid. And uh, whoever actually did that... Uh-oh. Did I speak too soon? Maybe the star post itself has just got the bottom rung chipped off. It looks like it was not all the way tight, but okay. So I think that the repair job isn't too shabby actually, but I probably will want to replace those posts. But uh, yeah, that's not, that's not horrible. They're, they're, they're lucky to have had all that real estate to work with to put these massive washers on there. So I'll probably have to undo all that in order to redo it, but um, maybe I'll keep the washers, maybe I won't, we'll see. But it's actually not that bad. <clears throat> but that's, yeah, that's the uh, only other whammy I've found so far, other than the Varister. So uh, I'm going to do a couple miscellaneous things in here before I put the head on. I'll clean up the cabinet switches, change the Varister. Ah, I should check all these fuses make sure they are correct uh take a closer look at the connectors which actually look to be okay maybe repin them we'll see uh these are fairly easy to repin and you know for bulletproofing purposes i may just do that but uh yeah so that's what i'll be puttering around with while listening to the super awesome pinball show okay i did a few things i took my file. Actually, I still have it right here. This guy here. It's a handy little guy. What did I pay? 89 cents at Forest City Surplus. And I use that to clean and adjust both flipper cabinet switches. Also, I took apart, cleaned up the shooter rod, and installed a nice cute green shooter tip. I checked all the fuse values on the power supply. This one here is supposed to be three quarter for the displays and it was 2.5. This one on the very end was supposed to be three amp slow blow and it was a five amp. So I had to make two changes, but uh, definitely a bit of over ampage going on there. And uh, yeah, I think that's really about it few little minor tweaks. Oh, that's not it. I lied. I knew there was something else. Here we go. MOV, our metal oxide varister, has been replaced. There's no polarity on that thing, so you can install it either way. Uh, I'm going to assume that when I power on the machine, it's not going to blow up again. But no promises. So I was doing a little bit of reading and sounds like uh, if there's another issue with the line filter or uh, it sounds like there might be a fuse in that little line filter box too, possibly, maybe, then uh, I don't know, we could have another explosion and these things uh, are pretty explosive. So hopefully, what is in this thing? What is it? It's metal oxide, I guess. There's a little hole in there. So, I think that's maybe the first time I've ever had to install one of those. So, I will definitely have you on hand to witness the powering on um, in case something happens. It is long weekend, so we could have some premature fireworks. <clears throat> Here's the problem. I don't know if the switch is on or off. I'm going to assume off. I think, you know what? I think I'm just going to gamble here. Okay, you know what? This power bar is kind of inaccessible and full of a bunch of crap. This power bar 
it's a little more accessible. And actually, I should be able to pull it a little closer to the machine. Okay, I'm going to plug this on here. Can you see? All right, I'm going to plug it in. Tell me what happens. Three, two, one. Okay. No explosion. That's good. Machine must be powered off. Well, that's not necessarily true. I still don't have the head connected. So, this is uh, slightly terrifying. Let's turn off the flash so we can catch the fireworks in case they do happen. All right, turning on the machine in three, two, one. Oh, thank you for not blowing up. Okay, we just got some general illumination. What's it looking like? Okay. All right. I am happy that that went smoothly. Okay. I think I am probably ready to install the head now. So, one moment. Oh, I noticed one more thing. Uh, just a quick visual inspection. This coil stop is missing a screw. Let's see. Is it actually going to go in? Did it just wiggle itself loose? Is it stripped? Why is it missing? No, nope, threads seem to be okay. Must have just wiggled itself loose over the years, but there we go. Found another screw that matches, and the other guys look good. So, moving on. All right, there we go. Space Invaders now has a head. A uh, handy little trick is to use something to support the weight of the uh, swinging door so it doesn't bend the back box and strain your bolts and, and whatnot. So uh, I got that trick from Mitch Ayers actually. He used uh, one of these, but mine is uh, not tall enough. So I use my um, pipe insulator. So that will keep the stress off while I now go through, deal with this mess and connect everything up so we'll be powering this bad boy on pretty shortly hopefully all right space invaders is all wired up and should be good to go i clipped off the battery holder we are not going to be using that again let's take a let's take a look just for fun see what happens here. Whoa. Energizer. No problem. The other energizer looks fine too. But Duracell. Let's see just how bad this is. I know I shouldn't really be touching this. It's pretty corrosive and not good for you. Oh boy. Wow. This may be one of the most exploded batteries I've ever seen. Yay. Is there a date on this? What year is this good till? Oh, there is. Oh. 2014. Huh. That's a little expired. Wow. That is nasty. I should stop touching it. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. I noticed this. I missed a connector, so I better find that. But I did replace the battery holder. I got a brand new one with a new diode and new batteries good till 2031. Now I may end up uh, changing this to a button style lithium battery at some point. But this was kind of just the quickest and easiest way to get up and running here. Um, and I'll probably want to do some other things to the boards too, some mods on uh, the driver. But we know when we picked up the machine that it was working, so I'm kind of hoping that it still does. But not until I plug this guy in. So let me find that, and uh, we'll power this guy on and see what happens. All right. Are you ready to invade some space? Oh, kind of just looking at it, it doesn't look very level at all. But uh, 
not too concerned about that right now. Okay, let's throw in our ball. And let's turn off this. I don't know what's better. It is a mirrored back glass, so it's kind of hard to film that. Okay. Oh, power button's a little bit sticky. Three, two, one. Ooh, cool. We don't have the audible dings like the stern. Ooh, listen to that. Cool, all right. CPU powered up. All displays are looking nice. Looks like all the infinity light bulbs are even. Mmm. I bet you Keith replaced all those at one point. Let's see, what's the score say? 8,004. Okay, so definitely we have some garbage in the memory. That's because I was messing with batteries. And let's take a look at the uh, play field here. Is it better with the lights off or lights on? Let's turn on the lights and see. I guess we see a little bit of both. Okay, we got a one bulb out. Maybe the special. Uh, none of these guys are lit up. Not many. 20, 10, 7, 4, 4X, 3X. Okay, we have a lot of probably crappy sockets. That special's not lighting up either. Uh, okay, well... Uh, we don't have any credits, so I'll have to clear off the memory, um, so we don't, and, and the interlock solenoid, that's humming away, oops, I may, uh, cut that out of the circuit as I do, because it's just unnecessary, okay, let's, here we go, where's the speaker, way back there, cute coin up sound, Okay, let's shut that coin door so it's not buzzing so loud. All right, game on. That's pretty cool. Listen, where's the volume? Is it on the... Uh, Volume might be on the uh, soundboard. Yeah, I think it is. So we'll just have to live with that. It's kind of quiet, but. All right, well, I'm just gonna see what happens here. A oh, nice plunge with the new plunger. Shane Jackson was telling me that this game Highly dependent upon the red space invaders to get your uh, super bonus. Uh, I think that's what he said anyway. Okay, so we got red space invaders, yellow space invaders, blue space invaders, the original spinner. That sounds cool. All right, well. All in all, oh, come on now. Slings working. Center target. What about this guy? Yeah. Oh, got a free game. What about this guy? Oh, hit this one lit. Oh, it looked like that was worth 50,000 points. Okay, so this can add up 10, 20, 50, 40, 50,000, or wait, 30, 40, 50, sorry. I know how to count, I swear. Extra ball when flashing. So this insert has a little bit of wear. Look at these guys. Cute little space invaders right here. This, this character has four eyes. There's a lot of art to uh, digest on this, like some really cool looking stuff. These are some creepy space invaders, that is for sure. Look at this guy. <laughs> I 
Yeah, so anyway, look at this. The art on this game is freaking awesome. Is this Ferris? Paul Ferris? There it is, right there. I know the art was inspired from uh, the Geiger dudes on Alien. And I have to check. I wonder if this was supposed to be Alien at one point, but they didn't get the license. The original Alien. But Paul Ferris art on this is friggin' awesome. Um, yeah, I just have to... I'll just have to, like, stare at it for a while to, to absorb it all. Anyway, um, things are looking like... They're working. I mean... This doesn't need a whole lot. I mean, I'm sure I'll find something. I'll refresh in the flippers. The pop bumpers, if needed, and clean the playfield, rubber it up, maybe LED it, because that would just be freaking cool to LED. Uh, I've had a couple machines with infinity lights, but I've, or have I? Maybe one, um, but I knit, I don't, I didn't LED it, so it could be my first time LEDing one of these. Oh, yeah, it was black hole. That's what it was. I never did LED that one. Anyway, uh, I'd say that is quite the success. Um, just some tweaking and dialing in, but we'll go over that in another video. But as for this one, pretty happy with how things turned out. So there it is, 1980, Bally Space Invaders. We'll uh, continue on uh, this series on another episode. Thanks for watching. Hey, look what I just found in the fridge. My buddy Paul Dewar brought this for me and left it behind maybe four to six months ago and somehow it still has survived maybe because it is six percent space invader action but anyway ah, that uh, matches my new machine just fine and dandily hey don't be looking at my dirty stove